All right, stop me if you've heard this one before. A young boy, a beetle, and a monkey, as well as a little paper samurai, go on a hunt for a big bad guy across a very treacherous landscape. I'm talking about a movie that I am absolutely blown away by. It's called Kubo and the Two Strings, and this is unlike anything I have really ever seen before in the movie theaters. This is an incredible movie. It is absolutely beautiful. The, the, the visuals are so rich, so gorgeous, so exotic, and so absolutely perfect on the screen that you're not going to believe what you're seeing as it as the story unfolds before your eyes and this is a movie that really relishes the act of storytelling and and the the nobleness of uh, just taking time to kind of paint a tale and uh, once again I mean this almost works kind of like a bracket for the little prince from earlier this year taking animation to new levels and new heights you know i mean we've seen so much success in the animation world there are so many artisans so many fantastic works that we can point to whether it's a miyazaki movie or a pixar movie you know or some of the stop motion stuff that's out there that it's just amazing to see th this unbridled imagination sort of spring forth and bring us something like this this is a tale of a young boy who is uh you know protected by a mother um who has some magic ability and uh, she's imbued some magic abilities in her young son who is an expert guitar player or you know I, I don't I don't actually know what the real name for the instrument is but it looks like a guitar and he has the ability to tell stories using his music and the magic that he has that allows him to bring paper to life uh, to kind of paint a whole kind of range of emotions and characters and it's a wonderful conceit it's a really really nice moment in the movie he's he goes into town he's taking care of his sick mother and he uh, creates a circle around him and he just captivates an entire audience of townspeople he says uh, if you must blink do it now and then he just gets right into it and and uh, Art Parkinson is the name of the of the actor who plays uh, Kubo and he does a tremendous job just instilling this character with confidence and uh, heroicism and uh, vulnerability and you just absolutely care about this kid you want to take care of him but you also see the ferocity that's bubbling up underneath this is a uh, uh, you know, a really magnificent tale. Anyways, Kubo will tell all of these different stories using his music and uh, papers flying all over the place and, and uh, being converted in all kinds of things. One of them is uh, this little samurai warrior named Hanzo, uh, who happens to be his father. The only thing that kind of took me out of the trance of this film was trying to recognize some of the celebrity voices that are in this movie. And Matthew McConaughey's voice is so distinct, he plays the Beatle. Uh, who's a fantastic character, and Matthew McConaughey does a, a tremendous job with this character, but he's he's so distinct that it immediately ripped me out, you know, of the experience, and I was, you know, I was like, why did they cast him, you know, even though the character and his performance charmed me and I stopped caring about that, but I just feel like these animated works can be so unbelievably powerful and effective that sometimes, and I think that's the case this time, when you cast the celebrities, which I know you need on your movie posters to sell these movies, but sometimes they can almost cause a little bit of detriment because you're, you're suddenly ripped out of just following along inside the experience and you're thinking, oh, okay, well, this is a big deal. And if there's some kind of merchant, well, maybe it's just the way my mind works, but you think about the merchandising and the royalties and all of the other reasons why they had to cast a big actor like that. And, you know, personally, as is in the case of our Parkinson as Kubo, I love it when movies that are as expertly crafted as this one is um, also cast like that and maybe, you know, create a whole bunch of surprise with the voice actors that they bring on board. And certainly there are fantastic voice actors out there that nobody knows, as well as stage actors that nobody knows that could have played all of these characters to wonderful effect. Now, I'm not going to say that it takes me out of the movie so much that it, it's a major detriment, but it is something that I thought of. And it's certainly one thing that I thought of in the, in the sort of negative category. And we've been so sort of trained to think like this with the animated work that we see uh, which is so you know bang 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 and the pacing is so quick and we get from scene to scene and action beat and action beat and, and emotional beat and emotional beat uh, so quickly and stuff from Pixar and DreamWorks and, and uh, you know sort of more Hollywood uh, 
you know, crafted animation work that's out there that Kubo does feel a little languid. It does take a little bit of time. There's there's some just moments of just sheer beauty where we're seeing the characters just traipse across uh, an environment or through an environment to swimming in an environment. And it's wordless and it's just, you know, beautiful music sort of cresting. And we don't really get too much uh, sort of big budget Hollywood animation like this that often. and. It's in those moments that the beauty of the movie kind of shines, but it also, this is a movie that definitely sort of causes you to reflect and think about the, the people in your life and, the, and the, you know, the characters in your life and the story of your life. I mean, that's kind of what this message of this movie is. So it's in those quieter moments that you do kind of think about other things. And a lot of animated work doesn't let you think about other things because they're banging you over the head. I mean, I'm thinking of uh, Zootopia, which was a great movie, but it was nonstop, you know? This is not that. This is an action-packed movie, and there are some unbelievably well choreographed sequences in this thing that are gonna take your breath away. It's also a movie about uh, taking some time and giving the time to the writers of this movie to really craft an unbelievable, you know, parable and, and uh, a beautifully transporting piece of cinema. And sometimes that just feels out of sync with the rest of the stuff that we get out there. The Little Prince was very similar in that regard as well. It was also a movie that, uh, even within its own confines, had a traditional animation thing, but you know, in the sort of stuff based on the book, it went in a totally different direction. I'm talking about The Little Prince here. Now Kubo, I don't think, maybe hits all of the highs that I personally felt with The Little Prince, but it's certainly one of the best movies that I've seen this year. It's definitely, you know, between The Little Prince and Kubo, these are the two best animated movies I've seen this year. And this is a, a year where we've had an unbelievable flick like Zootopia. But you gotta get out and see this thing. It's not for little kids. I don't think my daughter would uh, be able to handle this. Um, you know, there's there's some pretty powerful uh, moments in this thing, some scary moments, some sort of high emotional moments. Uh, but God, it's gorgeous. Beautiful movie, Kubo and the Two Strings. Find it, watch it, and tell some friends about it. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.